relationships um, pretty much since I can remember have always been toxic. You know, I let them control my life, I let them control my addiction, I let them control who I was as a person. This comes at a cost, I'm ready to start over. Not only were things like not defined, um, there were no boundaries. Everything was lie, cheat, steal, do whatever I had to do to get drugs. Um, so I would manipulate that person into giving me more drugs. I would manipulate them into giving me more money. The bottom line is that none of my relationships, uh, specifically romantic, were healthy. They were completely disastrous, delusional. I couldn't be a good partner. I was trying to do it on my own, forget everything I've known for a brand new start. So, you know, we become so like, reliant on these other people for admiration and we're looking for self-esteem from these in these other people. So then, you know, we don't love ourselves when we're, especially when we're active addiction. I, I mean, I hated myself. I, I said it multiple times at night. I never really understood why. And now looking back, it makes sense why I sucked as a boyfriend. Because how could I possibly love somebody else if I hated myself? I had to dig deep into myself and do some work and really get down to the core of the reason why I choose the people that I choose to get into a relationship and the reason um, I attract people like that into my life. You know, it all comes down to how I feel about myself and what I think they can offer me. And at the end of the day, that was drugs for a long time. You know, I worked the 12 steps of Narcotics Anonymous and um, I had worked one through three, and then starting four, my sponsor had said, why don't you wait until you finish four through six before getting into a relationship? And I made that commitment. I was like, you know what, I'm willing to learn to get to know myself, to learn about my character defects, to learn how I can be a better person um, for another person too. So basically like the getting to know myself and getting to love myself took a lot of time and hard work, but it was completely worth it. It was really uncomfortable for me at first because I didn't, I related sex to drug use yep. and to that chaotic lifestyle. And it was almost like a bad thing that I was doing I was raised to think that sex was bad. So now today, it's like it's hard for me to have a, you know, a healthy relationship with sex because in my eyes, sex isn't good. So it doesn't really go with recovery. But what I have had to learn in recovery is that you can have healthy sex and you can have a healthy relationship and have sex and because you love somebody and it doesn't have to be, you know, sex for drugs or sex for money or whatever the case may be. The day I lost my virginity, from that day on, like I was having sex in the addictive form, like I couldn't stop because it was such a nice form of validation. Sex has different meanings with different people and it's not just the same thing every time like it used to be for me. Yeah. You know? Well, I, we, we like become cognizant at some point that happiness is an inside job and we can't get that from external. Yep stimulation. That's why that feeling happens. When we start doing these things that we used to do in our active addiction, we do them in our recovery, they don't give us the same pleasure anymore because we realize that it's not going to work. What are you looking for in a relationship as opposed to what you were looking for in active addiction? Um, well, in active addiction, as long as you had drugs and a place to get high, I'll, I'll do anything. Wow, it's a low sure. bar to set. Yeah, yeah perfect. very low bar. <laughs> Today, though, you know, I look for I mean, I hate to say it, but do you have a good job? Mm -hmm. Do you pay your bills on time? You know, I'd rather them not, you know, drink, use drugs yeah. of any sort because um, it's easy for me to slip back into it. But I still struggle a lot with relationships. You know, I've, I seem to push them away before they can hurt me. And that's kind of a survival tactic that I use in addiction. So um, I'm still learning how to find a different way to cope with no that's awesome relationships that you, i think it's awesome that you bring that up really because that's a lot of people struggle with it and just because you get clean it doesn't mean all of a sudden everything mm -hmm. in your life gets better when i finally surrendered and just was like i don't need someone right now like i don't need someone to make me complete i don't need to be having sex to make myself complete like once i like accepted that notion things kind of just fell into place and like he and i like 
admitted our feelings for each other, that it was a long time coming, you know? And we decided to get into a relationship and we've been together since September of 2016. We've like, we've gone to couples therapy during a time in which like I was struggling a lot with insecurity and he was willing to put in that work with me to keep our relationship going. Um, like I've never had that. That was never an option while using, absolutely not. And even in early recovery, it wasn't an option. You have a partnership here where you guys are a team. And that's exactly the way that I feel. And I think before the relationship for me was of what, what how can I, how can you be of service to me? Mm. It's very crucial in early recovery to make sure that you're focusing on yourself and not a relationship. Down, all comes down to motive, right? Mm. Why are you getting in the relationship? Yeah. And if you're looking to get into a relationship because you want to escape yourself, mm -hmm. then it's probably not the right time to be in a relationship. Yeah, usually the time that I would get into relationship and treatment was so I could get the focus off of myself because I didn't want to sit down and take a hard look at who I really was as a person and the things that I needed to change. It's really hard to look in the mirror, especially it in is. early recovery, to look yeah. in the mirror and be able to face our own demons and face our own issues. It's easier to just to find another way to escape. And if we can't do it with drugs, we do it with sex or with other people. Mm -hmm. yep. So tell me what your relationships look like in recovery with your family today. I have a better relationship with my family living thousands of miles away from them in recovery than I did ever living down the street from yeah. them. I talk to my mom every day about everything. I call my sponsor, but like after my sponsor, I call my mom. Mm -hmm. Relationships definitely changed. My parents enabled me a lot during my active addiction. And um, when I got clean, I told them, I was like, don't give me any money. Whatever I tell you is a lie. The only times that money would be appropriate is if X, Y, and Z call you and say it's a real emergency. But me, I'm lying. Even though I, I would say all three of our relationships with our families is great now, it took me years to get there. And there was a lot of awkward moments and awkward questions where they clearly didn't trust me for years. A lot of people in early recovery, they, they use for 10 years and then they get 30 days and they're like, why doesn't anybody trust yeah, me? Yeah, they think they're all better. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, well, you know, you gotta work on that trust. You don't just get anything. There's no instant gratification. There's no, yeah. you know. Well, especially with hurt feelings. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta find people and find the, the love that you need el elsewhere. And mm -hmm. I feel more at home in the rooms of AA than I do at my own parents' house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. just, it's, I'm just more comfortable there. It's my tribe. Those are my people. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think it's important that we find those type of relationships and people we can be completely ourselves in front of. Right. That's the goal. The goal is just completely being myself, like unapologetically wherever I am. And when I find the relationships in my life where I can do that, whether it be a friendship with a family member, with a romantic partner, like that's what I cling to. Coming to Recovery Unplugged is the reason I'm alive today. Like I can wholeheartedly say that. I thought I was going to die at 23. I got clean and stayed clean um, the month after I turned 23. Recovery Unplugged like showed me how to love again. And that doesn't mean romantically, that means just like how to be a loving human being and a kind soul. I needed it. I really needed it.